when I was growing up, we didn't go to church uh, very much. I was first invited to church when I was 12 years old and went a few times, ended up walking down the aisle, getting baptized, but I truly didn't know who Jesus was or what he had done. Um, didn't go to church very long. Was invited again to church when I was about 15. Used it more as a social hangout, I would say. And after graduation, I got out of church again and went my own way, so to speak. Uh, skipping forward just a little bit, I was married when I was 23. Uh, very happy to be married. I'd always wanted to be a wife. And um, that was May of 2011. At the end of the same year, my sister started going to church and she invited me to go with her. And I did. I had always enjoyed church. So um, that was at Incinitobi at Life Point under Brother George Ross, who was great great at explaining the word, but I was very confused. I had heard a lot at this point, uh, a lot of theories, a lot of what people believed, and you don't really know what to believe. So I was invited to a CBD class, which is a chronological Bible discipleship for women, where you read the whole Bible in a year. And I did. I read a lot. I learned a lot. And I was in my kitchen one day. I had been going for about a year. It had, um, and it hit me, if you ever had a piano fall out of the sky, that, that was my day. So, uh, and it hit me that Jesus loved me. He had died for me. If I had been on the only one on earth, He would have still came and died because He loved me. And I just remember hitting my knees in my kitchen and um, asking for forgiveness and asking Jesus to come into my life. So I was once again baptized, this time on the right side of my salvation. Um, a wonderful feeling, but after you know Jesus and you know the love of Jesus, then you start seeing the sins in your life and the things that you really need to start changing. And I'm a pretty boring person. I didn't have um, a lot that needed to be changed. Um, however, there was one sin in my life that I was very convicted over, and that was that I love my husband more than I love Jesus. And um, didn't know how to get around that. I, if my husband and I had plans, I would skip church or um, Sunday night, Wednesday night, that was a no, that was husband time. And it was all my fault. My husband asked me if I was going to church and I'd say, no, not tonight, or I'll go with you instead. And, um, but I was very convicted over it. Um, very heavy, if I would read the word or if I would go to church. So one day I was praying, I was talking to the Lord, and I remember just saying out loud, but Lord, how do I love my husband less? And in my heart, it's almost like he laughed at me. He's like, I don't want you to love your husband less. I want you to love me more. Cue the other piano in my life. Um, but truthfully, in my heart, I was devastated because I didn't feel like I could do that. I felt like loving the Lord more meant spending less time with my husband, which meant loving him less. So I was torn. I uh, felt like I had failed. I could not do what he wanted me to do. I got out of church. I got out of the Word. And um, that went on for two or three years. So one night, um, it was the beginning of 2016, I was, I was praying, very convicted. If you know Jesus and you know the love of Jesus and you're not in His will, you're a miserable person. And I was spiritually miserable. Um, so I was just 
really broken one night before the Lord and was begging him to teach me how to love him more, basically. And I just had this feeling come over me that said, something's going to happen in your marriage. And I can't explain it. And I pushed it off as a fear. Um, but it wasn't too long after that. I would say around July 2016, um, my husband cut off. Uh, we were extremely close, and it went from him loving me to almost seeming hatred um, very quickly, almost like a light switch. And for someone who loved to be a wife, this was devastating for me. Very hard, very hard time. And the more I would try, the further he would get. So what do you do after a month or two when you can't explain anything in your life? You go to the Lord. And I knew that when I went to the Lord, I was going to have to um, start doing what the Lord asked me to do. Um, I started going to church again, this time Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday night, reading, um, just learning, praying again, just trying to put the pieces together where they had um, been broken. And I started putting parallels on my spiritual life and my marital life. I had been ignoring God like my husband was now ignoring me. And God had pleaded with me through the Holy Spirit and conviction to spend more time with Him, just like I was now pleading with my husband to spend more time with me. And I saw my own unlovingness toward God through my husband's unlovingness towards me. So I asked uh, my husband one day if he wanted to be married, um, if he was even interested, and he said he was. Um, but it was the same thing that I was saying to God. Yes, I love you. Yes, I want to have a relationship with you, but I don't want to change anything. I don't want to make any effort. So then um, I was led to 1 John 3.18, which says, Let us not love with words and speech, but let us love with action and in truth. <clears throat> and it just... Um, very broken before the Lord when all of this really started opening up in my mind and um, Him just showing myself to me, my sin. So around September or October, um, I got a clue that all of this um, problems with my marriage could have been because of another woman. And I asked my husband about it and he he said no, very adamant that that was not the problem. So, um, but over the next, I would say six or so months, um, I went into my own state of depression and anger and just bitterness toward everything. I didn't want to be at home. Uh, made excuses to stay away. He did the same. And um, had thoughts like, if your husband doesn't love you, then who can love you? Um, prayed for the Lord to just take me. And that, that was going to be a, my biggest battle. In my mind, my purpose was to be a wife. And I was failing at that purpose. So I would sp spend nights crying because I was just failing. And my relationship with the Lord, with Jesus, was getting so much stronger, but my marriage was cracking at the seams. I would say it was um, around April in 2017 that I hit my breaking point, and I just begged the Lord to take the anger and the bitterness and just told him, I said, you did not make me to hold on to this. This, this isn't for us. Um, whatever is the problem in my marriage, I'll accept it. 
but um, basically gave it over to the Lord, His will be done, and was just wanting an answer at this point. On May the 8th of 2017, I got a text from my husband, it was a Monday, and he said, we need to talk. And at this point, I know, I knew what that meant, and I just prayed. Um, I prayed all the way until he got home, which was later that night, and just beg the Lord for the Holy Spirit because my flesh was not going to say what it needed to say. And my husband got home and he confirmed that it was another woman. And we talked for a while. I remember being calm. I forgave him. I asked him if we could make our marriage work. We talked on and off that week and on Friday he decided that we could make it work. Um, he wanted a divorce, and I just said, okay, um, that I still forgave him, that I still loved him. And on Saturday, I met with the lady that he was with, and I forgave her, and I told her I loved her um, because I had known her. And um, she told me even then, she's like, I don't deserve your forgiveness. I don't um, expect it. And I let her know I wasn't doing it really for her or for me. It was something I had to do for the Lord. Um, it was my way to begin healing. Because I was still very, very bitter. I had a lot of bitterness. But through this whole thing, forgiveness next to prayer has been my strongest weapon. I was not okay. <laughs> I was shattered, but the Lord was going to pick up the pieces, and I knew that. And there's a scripture that everyone knows very well. Um, 1 Corinthians 13, 4, love is patient, love is kind, um, holds no records of wrongs, endures all things, but I would never know the power of that scripture until this with my marriage. And that the Lord could still love me after what I had done to Him. That He could hold no records of those wrongs. That He could endure with me through all things uh, was amazing. So this was the absolute most difficult time in my life. And I still um, dealt with a lot of depression and thoughts. And I was asking God one day, why do you love me? And he answered my question with a question. And he said, why do you love your husband? And at that moment in my life, I didn't know the answer. And I finally said, because I choose to. And he said, exactly. And he reminded me that he would always choose to. And through all of this hardship, I wouldn't take a day of it back because of the knowledge and the wisdom that I gained. Um, the gift of forgiveness the love that flows from Jesus to me and to other people, um, more precious than rubies and pearls and all the fine gold. So, I think that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And if I got more of Jesus through my hardship, then I got life and I got it abundantly, which is what He says He wants us to have. I'm so glad that Jesus comes down to the valley to find his lost sheep. And he not only found me, he picked me up and he put me on his shoulders and he carried me out of the valley. And I 
am so anxious to start again with God first, with Jesus first in my life. I am Daniel Dover, and His grace is enough.